Hey boys and girls, Jim here again. I want to share with you now a uh, really wonderful piece from a gentleman named Enrique Pena. If that name sounds slightly familiar to you, it's because I had the wonderful opportunity to expose him to the tactical knife market a little over a year ago, actually more like a year and a half ago, as he was making his break into that world. Uh, you can visit that video. I'm going to put a little link up here so if you have your annotations turned on you will see that link to the original video of the diesel one and not only was it the first time he had gone into tactical folders but that was the the prototype the very first knife that he ever did and i thought it was a fantastic first effort and better than many people have experienced with makers that have been doing it for a while what we're going to see now is the next evolution and when I say evolution I don't take that word very lightly we're looking at a knife that is as close to perfect as could possibly ever be this is the semi dirty diesel by Enrique Pena and uh, I'll explain what the whole semi dirty uh, that all that kind of stuff means in just a little bit what you're looking at is a really wonderful large sized tactical flipper from a gentleman who's made a name for himself in the uh, that more classical field of uh, slip joints and classic designs things like that and when he decided to make his first tactical folder he wanted to make it a flipper he wanted to make it a big bold design and something that wasn't too over the top when you looked at the original it was a liner lock with full scales of lightning strike carbon fiber as we see now he has bolstered the design and done some really beautiful milling into this damn perfect carbon fiber this is really really good carbon fiber the name semi dirty diesel you can get a diesel you can get a dirty diesel where the uh, the diesel would have an all satin finish blade the dirty diesel would be the all black washed finish blade and the semi-dirty, which is my particular favorite, gives you the two-tone, where you get the dark black uh, acid wash primary bevel and top swedge, and the flats are done to a very nice hand rub satin. I kind of like the idea of having the two-tone because the handle is two-tone, being the 6AL4V titanium bolster and the black carbon fiber for the scales. Something about this knife that you really need to understand is no matter how good you think it looks you won't understand how amazing it is until you've held it in your hands I've had a wonderful opportunity to handle quite a few of Enrique's knives from the original prototype to the first um, custom piece that he made after that that uh, I was able to actually sell when I was doing the uh, uh, the live knives program and they were great knives there are a couple little things here and there that I pointed out in the video that Enrique immediately changed, uh, such as adding jipping to the flipper tab, strengthening his detent, making it a little bit sharper. Not being a finger breaker, but just making it a sharper, more pronounced detent. The little details that you're about to see here on this knife are really what sets this knife apart. Now, I really want to take a good look at it because when you look at the basic design, this is something that a lot of makers have done three and three quarter inch blade bolstered carbon fiber handles with milled lines as a matter of fact those of you that are uh, on my channel a lot might remember my original uh, dust and turpin strife and there are a lot of similarities there in the design obviously they're very very different three lines versus four shorter bolster longer bolster straight bolster angle bolster different blade shapes um, you know different processes throughout the entire making process but in its general look, you know, to somebody that wasn't a knife guy that wouldn't be able to pull out all of those little details, they look remarkably similar. And what's really great is they work very much the same. This one's a little bit smoother. And this is still brand new. It hasn't even broken in yet. But what I found to be remarkable is this is built as perfect as my strife is all the things that we look at 
from premier grade makers where you have that seamless transition from bolster to scale. Now, I want to stop there for one second because I remembered seeing a, uh, a topic somewhere on a forum where uh, people were talking about bolstered knives and somebody brought up, oh, well, Jim said in his videos that the mark of a great maker is having a seamless transition from the bolster to the other materials. And a maker jumped in and, well, you know, just it, it just, you know, it got kind of pissy. And I wanted to clarify that. There are specific designs where they will make the scale thicker and it will be beveled down over to the bolster. That's not supposed to have a smooth, seamless design. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that every bolstered knife needs to be completely smooth. There are going to be design choices that are made for a specific knife that call for a different way of making. You know, maybe they'll bring the materials close together, bevel the, you know, the bolster down, bevel the scale down to meet in the middle. There could be a lot of different ways of doing it. I'm not saying that they all have to be smooth and seamless. When it's made like this, in this fashion, yes, it should be, you should be able to run your finger over it and not be able to feel a jump between the materials because that was obviously their goal. When Enrique made this, he wanted to make the materials close together and have them on the same height. So in those cases, yes, you should be able to run your finger over it and not feel that transition. Another thing that I like that he did, this looks like a flat-sided knife when you look at it, like it's a slab-sided knife, but it's not. There is actually a uh, belly to this contour going throughout the entire knife. It's very subtle, but because he doesn't put a chamfered edge on the handle and he doesn't round that off, you get the feel of a square knife. And what I mean by that is there's always that decision, I'm sure, that a maker has to make. When he's profiling his handle, do I want it to be rounded and contoured and completely slick and smooth? Or do I want it to be a really utilitarian knife where when the customer or the client grabs it, it's not going to twist and torque in his hand because it has that little bit of edge that allows you to hold it square. This has the best of both worlds. If you look at my Turpin, you know, you've got a nice contour and then he rounds everything off. And that's a little bit softer. Now, I'm not saying this is going to give me any, any hard time if I go to use it, but it would be a little bit smoother in the hand than this one, where this one just kind of wants, wants to lock in. So that's a choice made by the maker when they're designing the knife as to how they want it to feel in somebody's hand. I cannot get past how smooth this is. The first ones were smooth. This is like butter. It is an incredible leap forward for Enrique. I was very excited when, uh, when I talked to Enrique a little over a week ago, and uh, he says, listen, I know you've been wanting to get one of these. You've been waiting for well over a year. You know, I've, I've got five on the bench right now. Four are accounted for. Do you want to buy the fifth one? Because I know that you've been kind of going nuts. And I'm cool. I try not to pester makers and go, you know, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. He always knew that I wanted one. He knew that I wanted a semi-dirty. And... It just happened to work out at a really, really good time. So uh, thank you, Enrique, for that phone call. I really do appreciate it. So let's talk about the construction. Uh, what you've got here, again, as I mentioned before, is a three and three quarter inch blade. So you've got a good full size knife here in CPM 154. So it's a really good quality steel. Uh, I just did a review on a Stephen Skiff the other day, CPM 154. I like that steel. It's a good all around everyday steel. I'm not out there laying carpet and cutting shit all day. I'm not cutting through aluminum cans for fun. I'm not doing wild and ridiculous crazy shit. So I don't always think that I need to have the most super steel that's available in the world. CPM 154 is going to have good edge retention. It's going to have a nice strong blade. It's going to be very, very corrosion resistant. Again, something else I don't worry about because I use Aegis EDCI solution. So I keep my blades clean that way and I keep them protected from rust and corrosion. So it's not really that big of a deal. So if I find a knife in D2 and I really like the knife, I'm going to buy it because I'm not really going to do anything that's going to seriously damage it. So good steel, great finish work on that steel. 
Now, as you see, I already have used the knife just a little bit, so it's got a few marks on it. Not really all that big of a deal, but uh, just a couple of times. I've actually carried this. I've only had this for five days, and it's already been in my pocket for three of those five. So, yeah, you can tell that I really do like it. Clean work all the way throughout. Here is your, whoops, bang into the camera. There is your lockup. Take a look at the blade centering for those that have to see that. You know, we really don't talk about that that much because I'm always reviewing or doing overviews on high-end customs. And at that point, you don't really worry about little things like, you know, blade centering because it's going to be centered. And if it's not, it's just because the pivot came loose for some reason. But uh, anyway, here's the rest of the details. Here is a full back spine done in a gear pattern and it's flush with the cutaway and the lanyard post so you can have a lanyard on here if you want it but if you're not a lanyard person you don't have a big hole in your frame taking away from the design aesthetics of the knife there it is right there very simple very easy to use I'm typically not a long clip person however it works really really well and one of the things that I appreciate about Enrique's evolution um, what he's done here you have the functionality of a standard bent spring clip, but it's a fully sculpted, 3D sculpted, contoured titanium clip that has a little bit more springiness to it, a little bit slimmer, and it really does function extremely well. It's got a nice, clean, simple design. Nice pivot clean work everywhere and again as, as I mentioned beautiful seamless work all the way around perfect carbon fiber no voids whatsoever it's got a nice shimmer to it in the light by the way love taking this out in the sunlight pulling it out of the pocket and playing with it and just watching the light dance across the fibers looks incredible I also like having the milling in here I'm not really a huge fan of, of milling out carbon fiber but it gives my thumb a little bit of a hold sometimes when I have a, a very smooth knife my thumb if it's a hard detent knife might tend to kind of move up a little bit as, as I'm flipping it and it might cause the knife to shift in my hand a little bit with this it's like it locks my thumb right in place the action is amazing. He is using cage bearings. Everything is polished really well inside there, so you're getting a super glass smooth action. So what he's doing, instead of having the bearings riding in just uh, the pocket of titanium, where it's actually going to press into that soft titanium, uh, he actually has a disc in there, a disc that he built, a little steel race that's fully polished. He puts that polished race in there, so the, the, the bearings are up against that surface. He polishes out every area around the pivot area of the blade so that the bearing sitting up against that portion is on a smooth surface. And the result is an effortless open and effortless close. Now, you're not really going to close your knife like this in everyday circumstances. You're going to do one of these. But this is just to demonstrate for those of you that can't hold the knife right now just how smooth it is. It's that easy for it to close. Lightning fast and a very solid, very heavy lockup. It feels like a work knife. It feels like something that's going to be tough. It feels like something that is of extreme quality. You're not buying a production knife here. And we've had a lot of trolls lately stopping by on my channel and other folks' channels. Uh, say, I can't believe you'd spend $500 and more on a knife. What the hell does it do? Does it squirt gold? Listen, to me, that's like going to a channel on YouTube where somebody talks about Ferraris and McLarens and Porsches and, and berating them saying that your, you know, your $15,000 Hyundai does the exact same thing. It gets me from point A to point B, and it's got air conditioning, and the windows roll up and down. Yeah, well, but they're still entirely different breeds 
an entirely different manufacturing and quality and, and components and the amount of time and work that goes into it. If you can't justify it, that's fine. I get that. And there's no, there's no problem with that. But don't belittle others because they choose to buy a custom knife instead of a, you know, $150 Spyderco or Benchmade or Cold Steel or whatever. Everybody has different needs. And some of us uh, have had the chance to evolve. Man, until 2009, my collection was all, you know, Benchmades and Kershaws and Spydercos and stuff. And I loved it. Then one day I just stepped up. I decided to get in something that's unique and special and higher grade materials and better grade of workmanship and better heat treat and longer edge retention. All those wonderful things that we get from a custom knife. Now this is not a cheap knife. I want to put that out there. You're going to pay about $1,100 to get into this knife. Is it worth it? That's really up for you to decide, but for me, absolutely. Um, again, I can compare it very favorably to my Strife, and you guys know that I love my Strife. I love all the knives that, uh, that Dustin has made for me. And I have another one on the way. And I have a particular respect for the man and his work. The same level of detail, quality, and fit and finish has gone into this knife. The same thing that you would expect from one of Enrique's slip joints. And that's why he'll get two, three thousand dollars for a slip joint that's this big. No bullshit. Go look. You'll see. His workmanship is incredible. And it's taken him only a short amount of time to really refine that workmanship and his tactical flippers. So to see how far he's come in such a short amount of time blows my mind. So what I've got here is not only a beautiful knife, not only a functional knife, not only a knife that has an action that there are still makers out there that have been making tactical style flippers for years that have not come close to this action, but it's also a knife that I really wouldn't say is particularly flashy. This is one of those knives that's just an everyday look, an everyday quality carry. It's got a good blade on it. And by having that dark wash on there, it's going to hide a little bit of the everyday marks. Wow. I really am blown away by this knife. And by the way, the edge on this is stupid. It is, it is so fucking sharp. It's ridiculous. And... It's another one of those things that we sometimes take for granted. Yeah, I'm buying a good quality knife. It should always be sharp. But we've all gotten knives, whether they be production, mid-tech, or custom, that every now and then, not all that sharp. And this thing just slices like butter. His jimping, once again, is perfect, uh, and we've talked about that before. He gives you a nice thumb ramp, so you've got a little bit of angle there. And the jimping on there... Is perfect it's not too sharp but it's not rounded off to the point where it's useless when you lock into that you're not going anywhere you can choke up here now while you don't see a really pronounced choil there really is a choil there and you can choke up and and do that that very very fine cutting task look at that edge Whew. all around ergonomics are fantastic for my sized hand again I wear a size large glove if you have a teeny tiny hand no the ergos may not be as good for you uh, but for me the ergos are fantastic the action is almost beyond belief especially when you consider you're not spending fifteen hundred two thousand three thousand dollars when you get into that league of knife that's when you really start seeing that smooth as butter action and lightning fast action and then every now and then you'll get surprised with a great you know, $300 knife that has an incredible action. So I think everybody, everybody is out there making knives. They're really focusing on what we're saying in our reviews, what we're saying on our posts on Instagram and in uh, knife forums. They're listening and going, hey, this action is really going to be a primary focal point for them. They want it to be fast if it's a flipper. They want a stronger detent. They want it to be smooth as glass. And everybody is focusing on that right now. And some guys have perfected it early on. 
Enrique's done a bang up job right here. Now he's going to be changing the way that he sells his knives. Uh, for a while there, uh, he had order books, and that's just gotten to be too much of a pain in the ass. We discussed that in great detail. He's going to start making his knives available on his newly redesigned website. So check out his website. I'll put it down in the uh, description down below. Check it out. And he's going to make announcements on Instagram and say, hey, coming up, let's say, whatever day, this Sunday at noon, I'm going to have 10 knives available, first come, first serve. There's going to be no bullshit, no pretentiousness. You don't have to pay money to, to have the privilege to maybe have your number picked and get into a lottery and maybe you can buy the knife. Fuck that. He's just going to make knives available as he makes them. That's a really great way of doing things. It also allows him a great freedom of just changing shit up. If everybody ordered this exact same knife, that's all he's making. If he decides tomorrow to do a blackout Damascus blade and Timascus bolsters and, you know, whatever else, he can do all that and then just make it available. And his work when, in other people's hands, listen to what they're saying, read what people are saying on Instagram and on the forums and everywhere else. They're all saying the same thing I am. The work is perfection. The action has to be experienced for yourself. It's just a damn well-built knife. And now you're going to get a chance to be able to own one and not struggle. That's a beautiful thing. And you're going to get that direct price. You don't have to pay the dealer markups. You don't have to pay the uh, secondary market. His secondary market's starting to climb right now. There are guys right now selling these for $1,300, $1,400. They're making a couple hundred bucks. So to be able to buy it direct from the maker uh, at a fairly regular basis... I think that's a really, really great idea. All right, guys, I'm out of here for now. Thank you, as always, for watching. Follow me on Instagram, and you'll see all the knives that I'm going to be showing on my YouTube channel before I get the chance to make the videos. Because it's a lot faster to snap a picture with my cell phone than to sit down here and, and set aside 20 minutes to make a video. Until the next video, guys, enjoy. Uh, happy Fourth of July. We just had a nice celebration here. Hope you guys did, too. You still have all 10 fingers. Well, if you started with 10 fingers... I don't know if you lost one in the war. I hope you still have nine fingers. I don't know. Uh, see you guys on the next video.